Both Generate Blocks and WordPress Core have a pattern library, but on their own, they've never really completed the job. They've only got you halfway there. However, now that Generate Blocks has added classes to the mix, we can actually supercharge this system to really make our workflow a whole lot faster. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can combine the powers of classes with patterns to make something that actually really speeds up your workflow significantly. We're gonna create a few common layouts that I know we'll reuse throughout our project and then set up a system to be able to easily insert those into our page with just a few clicks on our keyboard. If you'd like to speed up the way you work inside Generate Press and Generate Blocks, stick around and let's get started. All right, to start building some of these out, I'm just gonna start here on a blank page just for testing purposes. Now, the first thing I wanna set up are some default sections. Essentially what I want is a section as an outer container, then I want a wrapper inside of that. But I need a few variations of this. I need some that are my default content width, but I also need some that are varying widths a little bit smaller because sometimes I need a more narrow section. Having to reset this up every time, even if just having to add the structure and add the classes to each really adds up. And if we set up all this in the beginning, we can create reusable blocks out of it and be able to easily add them to our pages in the future. If that doesn't make complete sense now, I think once you see me do it a couple times, you'll have it down pat. So let's go ahead here and add a container and it's prompting me to add an inner container, which I will do. Now it's important that I put classes on here because these reusable blocks are gonna work in conjunction with classes. So for this inner container, in fact, let me pop open the list view so you can see. So for this inner container, I'm gonna do wrapper hyphen D for default, and we'll hit create. Now for the section here, I'm gonna call this section hyphen D since this is gonna be the default section size. And we'll go ahead and start with the new style. Now for the outer wrapper here for this default section, what I wanna do is change the padding. So I'm gonna say by default, all my sections should have 80 pixels of top padding, 24 on the left and right. And then once we go down to tablet, I'm gonna change this to 64 and 16. Of course, in my real site, I actually use clamp functions here so that I don't have to set different values at breakpoints, but I think this is just gonna make it easy for us to understand the purpose of this. So that takes care of everything I need for this default section. I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate it here so I can start working on my next section. What I want here is the same section D for the default padding around it, but what I wanna do is change this wrapper to a more narrow width. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this wrapper D class on it we're gonna go in here and make sure that the sizing, that the max width is not set here at the block level. And we're gonna add wrapper hyphen M for medium. And we'll go ahead and hit create. Here with my new block style, I'm gonna go into the sizing and I'm gonna change this max width to 960. This is just gonna make this inner container more narrow than my default one. Again, we'll just duplicate that. We'll go on to this inner container. I'm gonna remove the wrapper M and I'm gonna add a new class of wrapper-s for small. And here for the sizing, instead of 960, I'm gonna do 768, and this is gonna be my small wrapper. Okay, so now we need to create the reusable blocks out of them. So I'm gonna to go to this outermost container for our first section. I'm gonna click on the three dots here and say create pattern. For this, I'm gonna call it section hyphen default width and you can give it a category, which sometimes makes it easier if you're looking at the list views, but I'm not gonna worry about that in this tutorial. I'm gonna turn synced off because what I put inside this section is gonna be different every time, so I don't wanna sync those changes. Here, I'll just go ahead and hit create. Now on the second container, same process, I'm gonna create a pattern, and I'm gonna say section medium width, turn off the synced, and hit create. And lastly on this one, I'm gonna click the three dots, create pattern, section, small, width. Turn off sync and hit create. Now let's go ahead and save this just so we save all the new classes we created, but this page isn't really important. In fact, we can go in here and just delete this page. Now, when we create new pages on our site, new page, instead of having to add a container and add the section default class, add the inner container and add the wrapper medium class. For some reason, it's not bringing in that margin auto. Instead of having to do all that, I can simply type a forward slash and start typing section. Now we see we have our small width, medium width, and default width. So now I can enter in my default width and I already have a container 
with the appropriate classes on it. Now, if I ever need to update these values in the future, I can update them on the class and everywhere I use this pattern will get updated since I'm actually doing all the styling on the class level. But of course, we're not limited to just using this for sections. We can do it for all kinds of things. Let's go ahead and set up another example using this default section with the default width that I've already got set up. Let's say I wanna create some kind of three column layout that I'm gonna reuse throughout my entire site. I'm gonna use CSS grid for this, so we're gonna to have to make sure we're using a class. I'm gonna go back to the block level here, and we're gonna add another class to this container that already has our wrapper D class. We're gonna call this grid three, and we'll hit create. Now inside the grid three class, we can go into our global styles and start making the changes we need. Here, we're going to change the display from default to grid, and I'm gonna change this to repeat auto fit min max 350 pixels comma one fr and close my two brackets. Now inside of this wrapper, obviously we can't see anything change because there's no items inside of the grid. I'll go ahead and add three different columns. So we can see now we have our outer section, our inner container, and then our three containers inside of here. Now we also might wanna go ahead and add some gap. So I'm gonna go ahead and add 24 pixels of column gap and row gap just so it's there in place. So now with all of this structure in place, again, I can grab this outer most container. I can click the three dots and say create pattern. Here I can do section hyphen three column grid. Again, we'll turn off sync and we'll hit create. Now, anytime I need to create one of these basic sections with a three column grid, all I have to do is press forward slash, start typing in section, and you can see here I have my three column grid. We'll go ahead and click that. You can see it's automatically inserted one in. Both the core WordPress patterns and the old local patterns by Generate Blocks did okay, but it seemed like they were always more trouble than they were really worth. But once you pair them up with the new class system in Generate Blocks, you really unlock some superpowers that speed up your workflow. Being able to add these really common sections by just typing a forward slash and a few little letters really speeds things up. And what's even better is you can export and import these local patterns really easily. This means you can reuse these same layouts over and over on different projects so long as you use a similar naming convention for your classes. I think we're just scratching the surface on all the workflow improvements that are part of the new Generate Block system. So make sure you're subscribed so you can catch my next video where I'll be sharing some more tips and tricks. We'll see you then.